Last time, Tess told Yule the truth about his power, and she wasn't affected by it. They talked about it, and Yule surprised Tess by threatening to reveal her secret. Tess didn't plan to follow through with her threats, but she couldn't help feeling a bit mischievous for testing her friend like that. Still, Yule's motivations are selfish. She thinks if she doesn't get back at him somehow, she won't be able to forget being ignored for 14 years. Even though Tess's intentions might seem tricky, she stays strong and trusts that Yule won't betray her. He gently takes her hand and starts to lift it carefully. Then he softly places her hand against his handsome face, smiling gently with calm eyes. He tells her that ever since then, Tess has always been on his side and that she's the only one for him. Our heroine's troubled expression is evident. What Tess is saying is both true and not true at the same time. She has always been there for him, supporting him through everything. It's clear she sees him as a valuable friend. However, Tess didn't realize that he has changed a lot, both in looks and personality. Because of this, Yul's feelings have also changed. When our girl turns to leave, Tess tells her she's leaving, which makes the prince beg her to stay. But Yul continued walking away nonetheless. He brings up that it was her who wanted him to change, so why is she leaving now? Yule stays silent. As she nears the door and prepares to open it, Tess resorts to threats. She warns that if things keep going like this between them, he'll have Lily Shane executed. Despite hearing that, Tess opens the door and confidently tells him to do whatever he wants. She's about to leave when the prince speaks up in a meek voice, asking if she doesn't like this version of him either. Hearing the pain in his voice, Tess is momentarily stopped. But even so, she has to stick to her decision. She closes her eyes and tries to calm herself down. Tess says goodbye to the prince and closes the door, leaving him alone in the dark room. He can only keep calling for her name, while she's outside the room, clearly upset too. It's not that she hates the changes in his appearance. When she told him it was her type for a guy, she really meant it. But right now, she needs time to sort out her feelings. She needs space to think things through so she doesn't act impulsively. For now, they need to keep their distance from each other. Inside the dark and lonely room, we hear the prince sobbing after being rejected by our girl. Tears keep flowing, and a dark aura surrounds him as he admits he can't live without Yule by his side. Meanwhile, dusk falls on the horizon, and we see our girl walking down the hallway. Tessa's words keep echoing in her mind. She can't stop wondering what he meant when he said she also hates him. What is he implying? Who else hates him? As those words echo in her mind, she can't help but imagine lonely Tess, isolated and unable to express himself properly, feeling misunderstood and alone. That image reminded her of how she had always been there for him, the only person who saved him from loneliness. Since they met, the strange and awkward prince started wearing genuine smiles. Every time they saw each other, he got excited. Each meeting felt like the first, with the joy and excitement staying consistently strong. At one point in her life, our girl felt the same way, but now she's not so sure anymore. Then, she sees a mini version of herself and Tess walking around the same hallway. The prince happily clings to her, saying he's excited they can attend magic class together, even though in reality, he nagged the duke so he could come along. The innocent mini Tess smiles at her, while Yule thinks it's a great chance to learn magic by going to the grand mage's class. He holds onto her even tighter, saying that her happiness brings him endless joy. These two really make the perfect adorable little couple. And with the bond they've formed from being together all the time, it's undeniable. Tess trusted our girl unconditionally. And with the same sentiment, Yule also trusted her with all his heart back then. We get to see more of what happened 14 years ago. Inside the classroom, the kids address the Grand Mage in a very formal and proper manner. Yusinil introduces herself to the Grand Mage, stating that she comes from the Heartland family. With an elegant posture, she bows before the mage and tells him that it's an honor to meet him. It's impressive that at such a young age, this girl knows proper noble etiquette. Well, at least in front of other people, because we all know she's already an adult inside. She looks at the Grand Mage with great admiration and respect. She can tell this old man is amazing. The old man with long white hair and a beard is the Grand Mage, and he smiles at her gesture. The Grand Mage is the embodiment of magic, one of the finest practitioners of the craft, if not the best. But even so, our girl can't help but wonder if he knows how to cross between dimensions. Maybe he could even notice that she's from another world, along with the fact that she's reincarnated. While Yule was having such thoughts, something catches the Grand Mage's attention, which surprises him. Yule thinks the old man is finally catching up to the situation but is disappointed when she learns he was just surprised by her politeness. Tess is incredibly proud of her friend and boasts about her being incredibly smart, pretty, and the kindest in the world. 
With his last statement, he joyfully declares that she is going to marry him, smiling from ear to ear. Immediately after hearing that, Yul feels embarrassed and turns to look at the Empress's courtiers to see their reactions. But they don't say a word or react. Nonetheless, she still scolds him for uttering embarrassing words. He was saddened from being scolded and asked why. Then, in an instant change of mood, the sulking prince answers his own question, saying that someone might hear their marriage talk. With a cold and terrifying gaze, he looks at the courtiers and threatens them with his stare. The courtiers feel a chill run down their spine as they see the dreadful gaze of his majesty, but they can't say a word. They just flinch from fear. Taking Tess's words as their cue to leave, the courtiers excuse themselves. The three might have understood each other with just a gaze, but Yul has no idea what's happening. She has no clue about innocent Tess's sinister side, but she wasn't given much time to assess the situation further as the Grand Mage declares the start of the lesson. He starts off by explaining the stereotype of how people often think of rituals and spells when it comes to magic, when in fact, all magic originates from mana. While the mage was explaining, we can see our studious girl paying full attention to the lecture, while the naughty prince just keeps staring at her, lost in his own thoughts. The grand mage further explains that mana is the basic form of energy that sustains life, and if they intend to join official classes, they need to understand this fundamental first. Without hesitation, the ever-diligent Yule starts reading books in pursuit of knowledge. Even at her young age, we can really see the dedication she puts into studying. She then asks the Grand Mage a question, which the old man is ready to answer. She asks if the Grand Mage knows about the angel in the lumberjack folklore of Mount Gwanixen. Meanwhile, the prince tries to butt in, saying he's seen that in the library, but he's completely ignored. The story of the angel and the lumberjack who stole the clothes of an angel who came down to the pond of Mount Gwanixen and the angel who fell in love with him but had to return to heaven. Folklore is often based on real events, so our girl is curious. She says that the sky where the angel lives and the earth where the lumberjack is are totally different worlds. She thinks to herself how similar it was to her situation. She was reborn in this world, so she wonders if the angel could have also crossed dimensions. She asks if there is a way to go to another world. Such curious questions pique the interest of the Grand Mage. He says that it's an interesting inquiry. Yule clenches her fist, hoping she would have the answer she seeks. The Grand Mage replies that the essence of her question is mana. Mount Gwanxin is famous as a place where a lot of mana gathers from generation to generation. If they use the mana of the mountain, opening a door to another world is not entirely impossible. Hearing that, Yule's face brightens up with delight. This means that it's not completely impossible for her to return to her original world. After studying for so long, she finally hears an answer that allows for this possibility. She stands up with excitement, ready to ask another question to the Grand Mage, but she stopped as he isn't done with his answer yet. He clarifies that even if that's the case, even the Grand Mage himself doesn't know of a way to open such a door. This truth hits the poor heroine hard, her hands shaking on the table. She asks how come he doesn't know when he is the most prestigious magic user. The Grand Mage explains that it was only possible because it was an angel that crossed worlds. No matter how hard humans try, such a race will never be able to achieve that kind of feat. At this point, all the life has been drained out of Yule. She thought she had finally found a way to return. Of course, our attentive prince noticed the sudden change in mood of his beloved Yule. He looks at her with utmost concern but is unable to say anything to console her. To not rule out all possibilities, the old man says that Mount Gwanxin has remained a mystery since ancient times, and that there might be a passage connected to another world. If a being is a non-human entity like ancient dragons or gods, they might know of a way. But this didn't relieve any sadness from our girl, since she knows that encountering one of those beings would be near impossible. Then, Tess raised a question. What about demons? He asks if the demons would know such a method as well. But the Grand Mage did not entertain his question. He says that such ominous words should not be uttered in the palace. Demons are wicked beings that lure humans with sweet words and temptations. The old man continues to talk about how evil demons are, but the prince is no longer listening. What's important to him is our girl's feelings. The scene switches to outside the Heartland Manor at night. The sky is filled with shining stars, and the surroundings are enveloped in silence and peace. Inside the mansion, the light in Yule's room is still on, and we see our girl still trying to find ways to return to her world. Beside her is the joyful prince, happy that he gets to sleep in Yule's room. 
but for this to happen, he threw a tantrum in front of the carriage in order to get permission to have a sleepover. Yule gave this naughty prince a well-deserved bonk on his nose, but she says that she doesn't really care if the empress were to scold them for this. Tess took the chance and invited her to just live in the palace, but our girl says that she won't be able to sleep there because she can barely even breathe in that place. Tess mentions that it's because Yule is too kind. The palace's gloomy atmosphere clashes with her cheerful personality. Then, he pulls the young lady towards him, catching her by surprise. As she falls towards him, he gives her a kiss on her cheek, saying that they should get married already. Dude's got no chill, smooth as ever. But don't pull that move in real life, folks, or the police might come knocking. After that, he hides in the sheets and tells our flustered Yule goodnight. His crybaby and willful behavior sometimes annoys our heroine, but she doesn't hate it. He holds her hand and tells her not to worry too much, and that whatever happens, her will is his command. Will he do anything to make all of Yule's dreams come true? Even though he doesn't really know what she wants, Yule still appreciates and loves his affection and assurance. The scene switches to our girl being in the hospital. She hears people shouting that she has been stabbed and is bleeding severely. Blood transfusion is a priority. It's the very scene she saw when she was about to die in her previous life, which continues to haunt her in her sleep. She watches her mother weep for her, pleading with her not to leave her alone. This scenario, no matter how many times she sees it, still breaks her heart. Every time she gets this nightmare, all she can do is apologize to her mom for leaving first. Something terribly wrong is happening to her body. The sensation is akin to being torn apart. Yul falls to the ground, bleeding from her nose and some parts of her body. It's as if she is reliving the incident all over again. With a sense of helplessness, she begins to cry and calls out for her mother to save her. At that moment, a loud shout of her voice is heard, waking our gal from the hellish nightmare. It was Tess, who looks at her with a face worried sick to death. He tells her to get a grip, continuing to repeat her name until Yule tells him that she is fine now. The sweet innocent atmosphere was cut short when Yule noticed that Tess is being disclosed to her, to which he immediately apologizes. Yule decides to play it off and starts getting up, saying that Tess is not giving her a break, but the kid was just genuinely concerned for her, and he makes sure that she knows it. In reality, it did hurt her. The nightmare was too much to bear, and it has been consuming her. She can still vividly remember how it felt to be stabbed with a knife. Ever since she was reborn in this new world, she keeps on having the same dreams of her previous life. From the moment she was stabbed by a thug to the moment she died in the hospital, it all kept on repeating. To her, it feels like this world is rejecting her, urging her to return to her original world. It's as if she has been cursed to not achieve peace of mind. But of course, she won't let Tess know anything about this, no matter how curious and genuinely concerned he is. Yule tells him that it was nothing and everything is fine, making the poor prince sulk. The prince casually mentions that he was really trying to wake her up because she was making such a troubled face, but he doesn't fail to mention how much he wants to kiss her. Yule gets off the bed and invites Tess to eat breakfast, which Tess does not decline. Several mouth-watering dishes are served at the table for their breakfast. They were about to eat when a sudden voice came out of nowhere, calling our girl out. It was her mother. As soon as she reaches her adorable daughter, she lifts her up and spins her around. Yule is clearly annoyed by her mother treating her like a kid and mentions that she is strong as always. Her mother says that it is because she is an elf that she has such physical prowess. The panel switches to a doting mother saying that her child is still young and that it would be nice if she could still sleep with them. Yule, on the other hand, is acting accordingly. This is one adorable panel, thank you, artist. The mother and daughter's sweet atmosphere is interrupted by someone gently grabbing the mother's shoulder. It was her father, the duke, and he says that it is improper to act this way in front of the crown prince. The mother realizes her mistake and apologizes to the prince, but Tess just smiles happily and greets her a good morning. It was a warm, pleasant morning. The beauty of the mansion's interior is highlighted by the bright sunlight. They are all happily enjoying their lavish breakfast, eating away their hunger with elegance. Well, all of them except for Tess, who seems to have trouble moving his hands today. Yule notices that his fingers are hurt, which is why he can't eat properly. She offers her food, all cut up, to him and prompts him to show her his hand. Looking visibly worried, she scolds him for hurting his hands again. Noticing this lovely atmosphere, the Duchess can't help but comment on how Yule seems to have a soft spot for the crown prince. But she brushes it off, saying that it is not the case. No, really, it is not the case. She just can't help but be concerned hearing how he is in pain. But the mother is completely oblivious to the situation and just stares at them. In this world, Yule's family is harmonious and healthy, but that wasn't the case in her previous life. 
her father abandoned their family and lived with another woman, leaving her mother to take responsibility for her alone. Her mother, who was weak to begin with, saw her health decline after her father's infidelity. Despite that, she only showed kindness and unconditional love. All throughout her previous life, she lived with the words I'm in pain on her lips. That is why when she sees Tess, it reminds her of her mom and she tends to take care of him even more. What will happen next? Will the complicated relationship between the two get any progress at all? Will our girl be able to find a way to go back to her home? Continue discovering destiny with us in this heartwarming story. As always, it is our destiny to discover new manhwa.